Interview and job search strategies that work. Um, I want to talk today about action. Part of the reason, um, probably really the main reason why I have this podcast, is to just help, really just help people get jobs, really, you know, IT jobs that is, right? Um, and it doesn't always look like an IT job when you first see it. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you an example, right? I was in uh, Sam's Club the other day. I was getting my uh, spinach for my shakes, my uh, smoothies. Not shakes, but smoothies. So I do a, a spinach. Um, what do I make? Okay, so I have this Ninja, right? It's an 84. This is me looking at it right now, actually. 84 ounces, is it? Let me see here. 80? 72 ounce. Sorry. 72 ounce Ninja. And inside that goes almonds. I put some almonds in there. I put some spinach. I put uh, two bananas. And um, I put two avocados. And then uh, two dates. What else do I put in there? I think that's it. Water, of course. Um, yeah, avocado, banana, spinach. And I have used kale in the past as well. Um, and so I was there in Sam's Club getting my spinach for my, my shakes, the smoothies. And uh, I just, you know, you, you know sometimes when you talk to folks, you just, you, I looked at his name tag and I was like, oh, kind of pronounce it a little bit. Okay, kind of interesting name. I was like, huh, okay. And um, just chatted a little bit. And I just felt compelled to tell them about Amazon. Amazon, uh, you know, they have jobs, right? Amazon. And, um, I, and, and he said, oh, really? I said, yeah, they pay, you know, they're paying like 15 an hour. 15 an hour. And they do distribution center where um, you might see it on TV. Or they do, um, they go out and, um, it, you know, they're in this big building and mail comes in, you sort it for different uh, zip codes and whatnot. They call that a distribution, distribution, distribution center. Yeah. At any rate, um, I just told him that, and he's like, oh, okay. And automatically, he said, uh, can I give you my email? And I said, yeah. And he's, he gave me his email. I emailed him the link, you know, the Amazon.jobs link. It's Amazon.jobs is the link. And um, off he's going. Uh, imagine that, right? And you, um, I guess my point is, um, if you have, yeah, sometimes you have to convince people to get jobs, or some, sometimes you have to convince people to um, better themselves, whatever that is. If it's making, not, you know, working at Walmart and there's a job paying nine, uh, nine and they want to, make more and it pays 12 or 13 an hour. Um, if you, you know, it's kind of one of those things with like, I call it, uh, um, just a human dynamic of action, taking action. Whereas one individual, you just tell them a little bit of nugget, a little bit of information and they go, bam, and they're off and they got it. And then other folks, you know, um, <laughs> you have to talk to them a while until they, and, it makes sense or they want to do it right like um i can tell you i have a friend i won't name any names but for a whole year um he didn't have a job for a whole year can you imagine and all it was is he needed a test called the security plus and uh, the security plus was 300 dollars, right so went without a job for a whole year for 315 dollars and you know, he still doesn't have it, by the way. But even if you take it twice and you fail it once, you're good to go. I know another person who hasn't had a job for eight years. And all they need is a Security Plus. And they have a job. And they're good to go. And it's in the um, uh, defense industry, actually, as a contractor overseas. And so you ask yourself, like, what, what is that? And... There's two sides of the story, I guess. One is like, um, see, Jim Rohn talks about it in his, um, in his talking, his speech. He'll say like, uh, what, is he, what do you say? He says, I won't, 
I won't sign up for that class, he says. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, um, I don't sign up for that. It, it's it, sometimes it's difficult, though. I'll tell you, trying to help folks. And that's where the website comes in, actually. GaryMcNeilyIT.com. There, um, people want to take action, go to the website. There's a couple of videos on there. Um, there's my core of my podcast. Everything I talk about on my podcast is is helpful for folks to get a better job, uh, whatever it is. The the one underlying thing I think that it, it's fear, right? And who doesn't have fear? Everybody has to deal with this stuff every day. It's uh, individuals in a person's life who c- you know can say one thing, one little thing to that person, and it just totally disrupt their their mindset and um, I'm no different I mean people tell me all the time stuff um, you know I'm I'm I get the same stuff as everybody else I'm no different than anybody else and I'll tell you a story recently uh, someone said something about you, you know because I talked to a lot of people and um, I like to I, I just talk you know when I talk to somebody I really want to understand because because I want to I want to live like like when they talk to me I want to live through their eyes basically or through their how they talk I want to I, I, I put pictures in my mind like oh that's what that's like so I want to try to live it basically the story it's really important so I kind of have a real good idea of what it is versus you know versus just like somebody you've had these conversations before where you're talking to somebody and they say, oh, yeah, sure, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. oh, yeah, yeah. And after a while, you know, like, you know, there's no story there. And then you meet somebody, oh, that person goes away, you know, back to their house, back to their town, back to the city, whatever, and you don't see them again. And what happens is you miss the opportunity if you just, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 to... Um, gather the information i will also say it works on the other way is where someone if you if you hang around somebody if you know somebody for a long time it does it does it is sort of um it gets the same way all the time repetitive just like what i'm saying sometimes it sounds repetitive where the person is saying something and you already know what they're going to say essentially and you can't sometimes you kind of it's Maybe it's the program reminded me, but it's almost like sometimes understanding um, what they're going to say next and having just the discipline not to interrupt and kind of just hear it out and say, well, well how does that, what is that story like? You know, what's the approach? And kind of take a step back, for me anyway, and just say, well, what are they trying to say here? You know, how can I... How can I better them? It's a, it's a short conversation. What can I do? What can I say to, you know, what, what are they trying to tell me? There, there's a need there. Well, how do I um, make them feel better? Meaning they say, you know, did you do something? Or have you tried this? And if you didn't, you might want to say yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's great. And you make a story up, right, or whatever. Um, just to make them feel better. I know it's whatever, but if you just do that, entertain them, because most people like to hear their own sound of their own voice <laughs> when they talk, and they like to, their ego, everybody has ego, right? So everybody likes to feel, oh, hey, you know, make me feel great, or whatever. Um friend of mine, Greg, <laughs> always says, uh, he says, uh, what does he say? He says, um, uh, um, he goes, um, well, that's not, uh, that's great. Um, well, what, uh, why don't you, um, enough about, enough about me. Why don't you tell me about me? <laughs> Basically, it's classic stuff. Classic stuff, yeah. Um, anyway, I wish the person well that I talked to at Sam's Club so that he can get a job. And, um, you know, if, that's the, you know, how, how, how do you, it's almost like um, there's an old adage, you go and look for diamonds, right? And sometimes even for myself, it's, I, I have an anticipation that if I talk to somebody sometimes, well, maybe, maybe that's the next person I, I need to talk to 
so they can give me that nugget of information. I'll tell you who generally does this well, what cultures, right, is the um, Indians. India, right, the country India. So I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of them, what they do is they just listen. They're very good listeners. So they listen to what you have to say and or even just in a coffee shop, I've kind of picked this up, this kind of the skill a little bit where I hear, you know, hear somebody talk in a coffee shop or whatever. And I just like, listen and okay, how can I apply that to my life? What can I do to apply that, that little nugget of information? What can I do? You know, it's, um, it's, I guess it's almost like this, learn with the intent to teach or learn with the intent to, um, you know, do something with that, with that knowledge. How can I use that knowledge to my benefit? Um, and I'll, I'll tell you a story actually real quick on this. Um, I was in San Francisco. No, I was in Palo Alto a number of years ago. And I was in a coffee shop and I was, I was there to take a Microsoft cert actually. One of the MCP or was it a CCNA? One of the two. And at any rate, I um, was in a coffee shop because the center was closed for that day and um, the website wasn't updated, whatnot, and, you know, whatnot, scheduling uh, conflict. But anyway, I went to a coffee shop nearby and I overheard some people talking about um, the um, CC, what is it, uh, wireless. So it was a certified wireless network administrator. They were talking about it. And I had, you know, obviously I worked in wireless before, microwave, satcom. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. What is that? And I thought to myself, you know, just like listening, right? And I wrote it down. Sure enough, I got the cert. Look at that. And uh, that little nugget of information um, that I, I gathered from that it doesn't always work that way. But uh, in my case, it did. So yay for me, right? I will say that... As far as action is concerned, um, there's, you know, many different like facets of action, right? For instance, it might be something as simple and um, it's just, you know, instead of doing this large thing, this big giant thing, it can be one small thing that leads up to these big things. For example, um, YouTube, you know, starting your own YouTube channel. So the first step is just to get uh, an account, a Gmail account, get a YouTube account. That's the first step. And, you know, once after that, okay, I got that. I got that step. I'm on my way. You know, I, this is step one. Good. And step two is um, channel art or just making a video. You know, go to Canva, make some channel art or make a video for that matter. That's step two. And then that's it. That's it. That's two steps right there. Done. And then you have a, and then now you have a YouTube channel, right? I'll, I'll tell you, as far as YouTube is concerned, because I have a YouTube channel, um, put some content on there. You, you won't, you won't see a lot of um, growth initially, and I haven't either. And that's, that's normal. Um, I'll tell you, I've heard people, individuals say like, they put up like 500 videos until they started to get some traction. And I've only put like maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred. I don't even know how many he is. And, you know, it's okay. It's no big deal. Um, because I figure if I just keep, couldn't keep putting up videos like three a week, then those individuals who have YouTube, who maybe quit after a year or after three months, I'm taking their spot. And, and you know, it is what it is. Uh, and then as far as the podcast concerned, put a podcast up every week. I'm, I'm trying to do that. And, um, the, you know, I've helped other people put up podcasts before start podcasts. Um, some have gone to have like four or five podcasts Two individuals that I know about had, um, just had one video or one, uh, in one, no, almost two years now time had one uh, one audio, one podcast or one episode basically, and then they quit. Right. And you know, it is what it is. That's called action. Right. So, um, that, that's really the key right there. If you've, if you want to know like some sort of like magical pill, 
the tag to be successful. I mean, I can only say, well, I'd probably say two things, really. Um, momentum and action. Probably that. I'd say those two things. Just doing something, whatever it is. If it's a Udemy course that you want to create, there's lots of Udemy courses out there, but they're not you. They're not like you. They don't do the same thing you do. Um, they don't have your charisma. They don't have your personality. They don't have what you have. Um, they don't come across as um, friendly or whatever. You know, for instance, you might want to create a, a Udemy course, Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com, and you speak another language. That is a market that I don't even, because I only speak one right now, uh, and that's English. As my or my friend says, English, right? Um, but I only speak one right now. And uh, if you speak more than that, you're heads and tails over me as far as that mark is concerned. And go, that goes as far as podcast, podcasts are concerned as well. That, that stands for that too. Because you know another language that I don't. And you can, you can go to another audience. And you can you know, talk about what you talk about on that podcast or on that YouTube channel. Or on that Udemy course. And I'll, I'll tell you another thing, right, about Udemy. Uh, now that we're just talking, like we're having a, a chat here on this podcast. And it's this. <laughs> when, when you have a, a Udemy course, and when you have um, content, right, and you, you're like a, what do you call it? You're a, I, wouldn't, I don't know about influencer. What I would call the word is... Um, you have something tangible for the marketplace. You're, is it a lot different than if you, oh, you know, you can work for somebody and, you know, work for your local city or whatnot and maybe you have friends or relatives who buy your product or whatever. But the rest of the world is um, getting your content via podcast or YouTube or Udemy. And what that does for you uh, from a, I guess, a psychological standpoint, having experienced it, it, it just get, you know, when you have those down days and you're like, man, am I doing something right here? Am I, am I good? Everybody has those, you know, nobody can stay. Um, it, it, it's just common thing. But in those days that are like, wow, you know, I don't know if I'm on the right track. You're like, oh, you know what? Um, there is, you know, let's say 13,000 or, or 2,000 individuals who have your course or 1,000 people have your course or even 10 people who have your course or 10 people who watch your video. That's 10 humans that, like, that's 10 humans that watched your video. That's amazing, right? Wow. Wow. And if somebody buys your product, wow. They bought your product. Wow. Awesome. And um, I can tell you, you know, it's a, it's an everyday thing to gain their trust, uh, regain their trust, if you will. Um, and, uh, yeah, so very well. I appreciate everybody. I'm grateful for you listening to this podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, have a great day.